Good morning and welcome to Government House. My name is Hugh Borrowman. I have the honour to be Official Secretary to Her Excellency and I'll be the Master of Ceremonies today. As we start, could I please ask you to put your mobile phones to silent. We do also ask that there's no photography during the ceremony. Um, the ceremony is live streamed and will be available uh, afterwards. You're welcome to take photographs after the ceremony, both in here, anywhere in the house, including with Her Excellency, but please simply not during the ceremony. Before we proceed, can I ask you please to join me in thanking the band of the Royal Australian Navy for their support today. This is the fourth of six ceremonies to present Australian honours, most of which were announced on Australia Day earlier this year. I will now announce the official party. They are the Honourable Stephen Mulligan, MP, representing the Premier, Mr Tim Wetston MP, Shadow Minister for Trade and Investment, representing the Leader of the Opposition, Captain David West, representing the Commanding Officer, HMAS Encounter, Lieutenant Colonel Aaron Jackson, representing the Army Area Representative, South Australia, Group Captain Andrew Harrigan, representing the Senior Australian Defence Force Officer, Edinburgh Precinct, and Assistant Commissioner Phil Newitt, representing the Commissioner, South Australian Police. If you are able, can I invite you please to be upstanding for the arrival of Her Excellency the Governor and Mr Bunton and to remain standing for the playing of the Vice Regal Salute. Gana Borgana Aelia, Gana Miena Aelia, Yaichi Miena Aelia, Kumatana, Yatananko, Yatuna Tampani, Gana Miena, Yaichi Yatamatina, Pukininanko, Yalaka, Takavicha. I acknowledge that the land we're meeting on this morning is the traditional land of the Gana people from the past, today, and into the future. And I particularly want to acknowledge and pay my respects to any Aboriginal people who may, may be with us this morning, whether from Ghana country or other lands and regions. Uh, Rod and I welcome you most warmly to Government House on this very special day. Today is really, well, it's one of five, one of six actually, as I just heard my official secretary say, uh, investiture ceremonies. It's special though, because this is really what I call public service day. Uh, everyone whose citations you'll hear about today in one way or another has been serving the public. And I want to start formally by congratulating those who I will invest with their awards today. But I very quickly want to move to you who are sitting in front, uh, the people who the award recipients uh, love, uh, those who've supported them to do what they've done and are being recognised for today. I hope it'll be a special day and one to remember for you. But I also want to acknowledge, and this is something I, I don't do in quite the same way at other investiture ceremonies, I also want to acknowledge your contribution in making it possible for those we're recognising today to do what they do. For uh, many of those who are receiving awards uh, are called away at very odd hours uh, or might start doing something and months or weeks later return to normal life. I know you understand the impact of that and I want to acknowledge it uh, as a former public servant myself and also the spouse of a former public servant. Uh, the awards in the Order of Australia are made for outstanding service or exceptional achievement. Uh, and really it does all add up to something quite extraordinary. And we celebrate extraordinary days in a variety of ways. Today we are doing it though, not just with award recipients and family members and friends, but also with the heads or uh, acting chiefs of all of the 
organisations uh, that recipients uh, have served with. So I want to acknowledge their presence today. Uh, in addition to our elected leaders, I want to acknowledge Stephen Mulligan as treasurer and now with other portfolio responsibilities representing the Premier and Tim Whetstone representing the Leader of the Opposition. I want to acknowledge behind me the uh, service leaders uh, and SAPOL. And I also want to acknowledge, because the work that the associations do is quite important as well, uh, Mr Noel Hender, OAM, who's representing the Chair of the Order of Australia Association in South Australia, and Andy, Andy McFarlane, who's the President of the uh, Public Service Medal Association in South Australia. Too. It's extraordinary too because recipients uh, don't typically seek recognition uh, and in fact I think it would be fair to say for everyone here today they will recognise that their service was given as part of a team most often uh, and they will acknowledge the contributions of those team members. They're all here of course because they were nominated uh, by an Australian, most often today though actually uh, by uh, people within their organisation. But you will all have, by the end of this morning's ceremony, uh, quite detailed knowledge of what outstanding service and exceptional achievement looks like. Not just the person you know about, but all others. And I ask you please, uh, when you leave, to think about who you might nominate in future or who friends of yours might nominate. It's really important that nominations keep on coming through. Normally with uh, at other investiture ceremonies, I end by encouraging uh, those who are receiving awards to wear their insignia. Some members of the general public need uh, some encouragement to wear their insignia. I will though take it for granted that recipients today uh, will be very comfortable wearing their insignia along in other cases with some other recognition that they've already received. So with all of that, Official Secretary, let's begin, shall we? Your Excellency, the following recipients have been awarded the Public Service Medal. Ms Rebecca Ann Bates is recognised for outstanding public service to the people of South Australia during the COVID-19 pandemic response. As Director, Creative Industries in the Department for Industry, Innovation and Science, Ms Bates has managed state government investment in the screen, music and craft sectors. She was instrumental in establishing the state's Music Development Office and driving the development of St Paul's Creative Centre, which has accelerated the growth of emerging musicians, creative collaboration and export market development. The Music Development Office led one of the nation's first COVID-19 response packages, administering millions in funding to businesses to ensure that they could continue to operate whilst diversifying their business. Throughout her career, Ms Bates focused on solutions, growth and sustainability, and her public sector contribution over 17 years has made a difference to artists and businesses. She is widely recognised as creating a legacy that will sustain and grow the industry into the future. Ms. Rebecca Ann Bates. Mr David Martin Brown is recognised for outstanding public service in correctional services and public administration. As Chief Executive of the Department for Correctional Services, Mr Brown is responsible for leading a team for, responsible for the custody of more than 2,900 prisoners and the supervision of more than 6,000 offenders in the community. Bringing a wealth of knowledge from his previous service in Queensland, he was instrumental in reducing re-offending in South Australia by 10% in 2020. 
South Australia is now regarded as a national and global leader in recidivism reduction. In 2022, it had the lowest rate in the country. Passionate about closing the gap and improving outcomes for all Indigenous South Australians, he also led the department in develop developing its current Indigenous framework and action plan. As a result of Mr Brown's bold leadership, the prison system in the state is operating in a safe, secure and humane manner with a focus on innovation, rehabilitation and best practice. Mr David Martin Brown. Professor Robert Olwyn Fittridge is recognised for outstanding public service in the provision of vascular surgery and high quality care for patients in public hospitals. Professor Fittridge has had an outstanding career of professional leadership as a vascular surgeon for 30 years and Professor of Vascular Surgery at the University of Adelaide since 2010. He established South Australia's first multidisciplinary foot outpatients clinics at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital Royal Adelaide Hospital and Lyle McEwen Hospital, and co-leads service delivery at the Queen Elizabeth and Royal Adelaide. He has served as Director of Trauma at Queen Elizabeth and as Senior Examiner in Vascular Surgery for the Royal Australasian College of Surgeons. His professional leadership includes several chair positions of medical boards, and he has served as President of the World Federation of Vascular Societies. As Senior Editor of the Medical te Text, Mechanisms of Vascular Disease, Professor Fittridge also leads the surgical education for the next generation of vascular specialists. Combined with his tireless teaching efforts, he's delivered profound impacts for future patient care. Professor Robert Alwyn Fittridge. Dr. Neil Frederick Maycock is recognised for outstanding public service in providing safe and high quality care for patients in public hospitals. Dr. Maycock was the Director of Anesthesia at the Royal Adelaide Hospital for more than 19 years. Throughout his career, he was an advocate for high quality care at a time when patients are at their most vulnerable. This was alongside improving the quality of training for future generations of young doctors. His department became one of the largest of its kind in Australia and supported departments outside of his jurisdiction, including pain service, anaesthetic outpatient clinic and the Department of Hyperbaric Medicine. Dr Maycock was keenly involved in the planning, implementation and logistical move to the new Royal Adelaide Hospital, focusing on clinical records and models of patient care. His ability to work collaboratively across a multidisciplinary team of professionals has improved public health care in South Australia and left a tremendous legacy for the continuing success of the Department of Anesthesia at the Royal Adelaide Hospital. Dr. Neil Frederick Maycock. Mrs. Sally Janet Smith is recognised for outstanding public service in urban and regional planning across South Australia. Mrs. Smith developed and delivered the implementation of the Planning, Development and Infrastructure Act 2016, 
which provides a single reference point for the state's planning and development policies. The $40 million program has revolutionised planning reform by providing clear and valuable guidelines for stakeholders and industry and is recognised as leading the nation. The planning system includes online lodgement and public notification with the ability to track development applications in real time. The improvements in the Act have created a transparent, efficient and agile planning system to ensure that South Australia remains livable, prosperous and vibrant while also retaining its heritage and green spaces. Mrs Smith's commitment to collaboration with local government, the development sector and the wider community is widely regarded. Mrs Sally Janet Smith. Your Excellency, the following recipients have been awarded the Australian Fire Service Medal. Mr Robert Andrew Cadd is recognised for distinguished service to the community within the South Australian Country Fire Service. Having attended more than 200 incidents in the past decade, Mr Cadd is a proven leader on the front line and has led strike teams into many major incidents, including the Pinery, Cudley Creek and Kangaroo Island fires. In addition to frontline leadership, Mr Cadd has sat as a senior volunteer on regional committees and is a member of the State Bushfire Coordination Committee. A volunteer with 34 years experience, he has been a long-term group officer, the most senior volunteer role in the CFS. He has led the improved working relationship between the CFS and farm fire units and has driven improvements for enhanced interoperability and safety. Mr Cadd has been pivotal in developing a community-led practice for monitoring grain harvesting conditions and has assisted in the development of an SMS-based system to give farmers early information about grass fire danger indexes and fire starts via text messages. Mr Robert Andrew Cadd. Mr Dylan Nathan Faber is recognised for distinguished service to the community within the South Australian Metropolitan Fire Service. Mr Faber has been an exemplary employee in his 16 years of service, including as a senior firefighter and station officer. He is known for always putting the community first. Continually going above and beyond to assist the MFS on special projects and committees, he has provided expert advice and knowledge in a range of specialist areas. Mr Faber has been involved in numerous deployments to bushfires, including Kangaroo Island, Pinery, New South Wales, Bangor and Cudley Creek. His roles at these included operational firefighter, station officer and urban search and rescue rapid damage assessment team member. He's a trusted, loyal and fierce advocate for a diverse and inclusive workforce within the SA Metropolitan Fire Service. Mr Favour also selflessly volunteers his time to support his fellow firefighters with the Australian Professional Firefighters Foundation and participates in numerous fundraising activities. Beyond his MFS role, he is also a dedicated CFS volunteer with 25 years of volunteer service to the Bradbury Brigade. Mr Dylan Nathan Faber.
Mr Peter John Reynolds is recognised for distinguished service to the community within the South Australian Metropolitan Fire Service. Since joining the MFS nearly 35 years ago, Mr Reynolds has served at various stations and departments. He has risen through the ranks of Senior Firefighter, Station Officer, District Officer and then to Commander in 2012. Known for being hardworking, dependable and having a meticulous attention to detail, he is a highly respected firefighter that others rely on for advice. Seen as inspirational, a mentor and change maker, he undertakes extra duties in his personal time to support the well-being of colleagues. Mr Reynolds maintains his expertise and skills as an operational firefighter and has been deployed on several occasions in response to the national emergencies, including the 2009 Victorian bushfires and the 2019-20 Kangaroo Island fires. Since 2015, when he was elected chairman of the Fire Service Fund with a particular focus on ensuring the upkeep and maintenance of the funds for rest and rehabilitation properties, he has supported the health and well-being of firefighters. His actions and commitment exemplify loyalty, respect, integrity and selflessness. Mr Peter John Reynolds. Your Excellency, the following recipients have been awarded the Ambulance Service Medal. Mr Andrew Paul Albury is recognised for distinguished service to the community within the South Australian Ambulance Service. Mr Albury commenced his Ambulance Service career in 1979 with St John Ambulance before commencing employment with the SA Ambulance Service's predecessor in 1983 as an Ambulance Officer. He has worked across South Australia and was one of the state ambulance services inaugural intensive care paramedics. He rose to leadership in 1993 as a station officer before becoming a clinical team leader and now state duty manager. In this role, Mr Albury provides clinical oversight and managerial response to ambulance operations. This role requires skill and tact to maintain flow in the health system. Respected both for his leadership and clinical skills, Mr. Aubrey has undertaken a Bachelor of Science Paramedicine degree and published research on paramedical improvements. He has also introduced new clinical techniques and equipment to the SA Ambulance Services clinicians. Mr. Andrew Paul Aubrey. Mrs. Kathleen Ruth Hutchinson is recognised for distinguished service to the community within the South Australian Ambulance Service. Mrs. Hutchinson is a frontline operational volunteer ambulance officer, as well as a highly respected and sought after trainer, sought after trainer and mentor. She's stationed at Strathalbyn and has previously worked at Mount Barker, Yankalilla and Meningi. Prior to the introduction of Triple Zero, Mrs. Hutchinson acted as an unofficial volunteer emergency dispatch officer within her local district. Telephone calls requesting ambulance attendance would be made to her home phone, with Mrs. Hutchinson triaging and dispatching local ambulance crews. This included those crewed by her husband, who also worked with the service. Mrs. Hutchinson managed professional employment as a teacher while raising a family 
and devoting nearly 50 years of volunteering to the ambulance service. She has also volunteered for the National Trust, the SA Country Fire Service Ladies Auxiliary, and taught first aid. Her dedication and community mindedness are widely regarded as exemplary. Mrs. Kathleen Ruth Hutchinson. Mr. Peter Michael McEnty is recognised for distinguished service to the community within the South Australian Ambulance Service. Mr. McEnty started in 1977 as a volunteer ambulance officer with St John Ambulance before commencing employment with the SA Ambulance Service's predecessor in 1987 as a casual ambulance officer. Since that time, he has held several roles with the service, notably as a communications officer, a communications team leader, a paramedic, and an intensive care paramedic. He's currently a clinical team leader and has also acted in the role of operations manager. During the COVID-19 emergency, Mr. McKenty served as South Australia Ambulance Services liaison with the State Control Centre. He also ensured that the ambulance services operational staff were appropriately trained to remain safe and confident in managing the pandemic. His continuing outstanding dedication and a variety of experience make Mr. McKenty one of SA Ambulance Service's most well-informed and knowledgeable staff members, as well as a highly respected peer mentor. Mr. Peter Michael McKenty. Your Excellency, the following recipients have been awarded the Emergency Services Medal. Mr. Christopher James Beattie is recognised for distinguished service to the community within the South Australian State Emergency Service. When the Murray River floods devastated communities along the river, Mr. Beattie tirelessly led the state, tirelessly led the state emergency service response as Chief, Chief Officer. Helping to coordinate the broader government response, he led from the front and had a frequent presence across the length of the river. As Chief Officer of the Service since 2010, he's expanded the SA State Emergency Service and improved facilities, vehicles and training. In this way, this way he has ensured the agency has been able to respond to numerous major events, incidents and challenges. With an educational background, he has provided inspirational leadership and support to maturing the service's training and development capability. Well regarded for being calm under pressure and having a keen analytical ability, he has also influenced and supported state and national projects and programs. His vision for a more effective workforce and better services to SA communities reaches every aspect of the organisation. Mr Christopher James Beatty.
Mrs. Andrea K. Gatenbeek is recognised for distinguished service to the community within the South Australian State Emergency Service. A driving force in the operations support team of the SES, Mrs. Gatenbeek performs a critical function for the agency. When the State Control Centre is activated, she steps up to arrange rostering, logistics, deployment assignments and assists in implementing tactical resource allocations. She has also contributed greatly to the development of the Humana Hut and Base Camp capability within the South Australian SES. Mrs Gatenbeek has been deployed widely, including to the New South Wales flood disaster, Cyclones Debbie and Yassi, Western Australian storms, the Bookmark, Kangaroo Island and Black Saturday bushfires, and she has also supported the River Murray flood response. Her role in the establishment of State Emergency Service SA Police Support Unit for the COVID-19 response was pivotal to the success of this initiative. Mrs Gatenbeek's tireless commitment to the emergency services community spans more than 26 years, beginning as a volunteer with the CFS. Mrs Andrea K Gatenbeek. Your Excellency, the following recipients have been awarded the Australian Corrections Medal. Ms Jennifer Margaret Colley is recognised for distinguished service to the community within the Correctional Services of South Australia. Ms Colley has worked for the Department of Correctional Services for 12 years, commencing as a trainee Correctional Services Officer. She moved through the ranks to Custodial Officer, Advanced Correctional Officer, and is now the Case Management Coordinator at Mobilong Prison. Her service to the broader community is of the highest level and shaped by a strong code of ethics. In this way, she ensures needs are met in line with operational requirements of the prison site. This includes supporting familial contact between fathers and their children. Ms Colley's liaison with Border Force Protection has ensured smooth transitions for the agency when a prisoner is departing the country or moving into detention. She is an exemplary officer known for her resilience, courage and tenacity with an exceptional ability to work with prisoners. She demonstrates empathy and encouragement in assisting them to make changes to minimise reoffending. Ms Jennifer Margaret Colley. Dr Yilma Wald Gabriel is recognised for distinguished service to the community within the Correctional Services of South Australia. Dr Wald Gabriel has worked extensively with Aboriginal offenders within the Department of Correctional Services. He has been involved in the creation of an Aboriginal specific violence prevention program that addresses violent behaviours in a culturally appropriate manner. He has played an integral role in setting up focus groups within the African community against the backdrop of a recent focus on violent behaviours within African communities in South Australia. His research into cultural biases that occur within correctional settings has been important work in attempting to reduce Aboriginal incarceration. Beginning his career with the Department of Correctional Services in 2001, Dr. Wald Gabriel's various roles have included frontline social worker practitioner in community corrections, intervention worker, researcher, project, project officer, and team leader 
before taking up his current role as a senior rehabilitation psychologist in the Rehabilitation Programs branch in 2016. His current role as Principal Advisor for African Services marks the culmination of his service to correctional services, reflecting his commitment to diversity and inclusion, his internationally recognised expertise, and his skill in sustainable rehabilitation and reintegration approaches. Dr. Yilma Wald Gabriel. Your Excellency, that concludes the presentations for this morning. Well, everyone, I'm, I'm sure you agree with me. It's been, for me, and I, I expect for you also, just a huge privilege to listen this morning to the service that's been given, to meet the people who've given it, and to celebrate with you all. So let's join together one more time to thank our uh, recipients of medals today. Thank you, Your Excellency. If you are able, please be upstanding for the departure of Her Excellency and Mr. Bunton and the official party. Can I please ask recipients to remain in the room for the official photograph and invite guests to join Her Excellency and Mr. Bunton in the drawing rooms for morning tea. Thank you very much. <laughs>